Good evening, and welcome to our YouTube channel, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight we have episode five of Horror on the Orient Express with yours truly as the GM. Richard has graciously volunteered to do the recap tonight, so without further ado, Richard. Okay. All right, intrepid adventurers. Uh, this is what I believe that we have for our last episode, in, I, which I believe is number four. We uh, braved the catacombs uh, after a day before we were uh, allowed entry into the library where we tried to find the creature yet again. We did find the creature, irritated said creature, <laughs> and left. After that, uh, we went back from our uh, hotels, spent our first day trying to go over the documents, and we found some interesting names. We ran across a German Count Fenwick, and uh, this is basically out of... I'm going to slaughter this. Um, it's the devil's image written in Latin. How do you pronounce the first part of the Diablo? The image uh, del Diablo. Yes, God bless you too. <laughs> and then what happened was... Uh, during the 13th century, we dealt with this German count. We were finding some information on him as a lead, with Count Fenwick. Um, as you watched on, we this led to uh, his house in Poise, I believe, Poise, France, which is about 20 miles outside. That's another place that we need to investigate. Also, uh, we read in a clipping on the 16th of January of Our Lord's uh, 1923, that the director of the asylum, Dr. Etienne, Etienne de Plaz, died. Not mysterious, he just died. And so there was an ad out by the acting director, uh, Dr. Francois LaRue, for the Charlin, Charlin or Charlatan Char Asylum. Charlatan. Charlatan. Charrington uh, Asylum, which just happens to be where this German count was um, taken away to. <laughs> and uh, that's all that we know right now. But once we got on there, we got there on the 19th of Friday, and we ran into um, a charge nurse by the name of uh, Madame Renault or something like that. And uh, our group has, um, was it Mr. Everett that found the file of the uh, late? Of it, the was late? Mr. it was, uh, uh, it was uh, Eldridge. It was Eldridge that found this file that was just lying on the acting directors of the former director's diary. A, a journal, a journal, yeah. A journal. But um, for some reason, sticky finger, something like this, the file just happened to follow the group. And we're now in possession of it. So uh, today is Friday, the 19th, January, 1923. So keep your fingers crossed, and hopefully none of us will go insane or split the party. Well, something That's that you, you've, you've forgotten was that um, uh, the director had uh, uh, one of the orderlies, uh, Paul Mandarin, take you to the uh, records room in order to go through the records, telling you that you could go through everything except the most modern records. Okay, yes. Apologies, dear listeners. So. So. Um, Let's split the party. <laughs> <laughs> going to the cemetery. <laughs> I'll take that, that long, dark hallway. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's what basically, I'm sorry, was it Paul von? Mandarin. Yeah. Mandarin. He basically was leading us to the records room, and that's when Eldridge swiped the journal, like on our way there. Right. Uh, borrowed. Is, borrowed, I'd like to say. Borrowed. Or yeah, borrowed. I, I believe that, um, now I believe that of, Xavier actually was um, keeping 
the nurse uh, occupied. Right, right, right. I, it's my job. Somebody's got to do it. I took a hit for the team. So what was the nurse's name again, Madam? Uh, Renault. Renault. I don't think we said it last week, but I I found that she actually has a name. <laughs> um, all right. Question is, uh, who's going to the records, and who's <laughs> flirting with the nurse? I'll flirt with the nurse. I'll take it for the team, and let's split the party. Okay, let's assume everybody else is going to go through the records. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, as you are walking, you, you're walking down the hallway and, and down the stairs um, to a large room uh, filled with all kinds of records. Uh, some of the records towards the back are in disarray, but most of them are, are well kept. Um, as you're going along, uh, the orderly uh, Paul Mandarin is... Uh, just asking you idle questions. Uh, you're from America. Um, you obviously speak some English. Um, and um, he shows you to the room and basically says everything from here back is uh, pre-revolutionary uh, and everything after that is, is post-revolutionary. However, he says... Um, you may find some difficulty in that period right afterwards because of the French Revolution. Uh, there was uh, you know, not not s uh, m many records were lost or, di or disappeared. So, um, if you need me for anything, uh, do any of you speak French? No, no good, sir. Only a very tiny, tiny bit. Well, you may have a bit of a problem then, since uh, the records are. Uh, but see what you can find. If you if you have any questions, uh, I'm, I'll actually be right outside. Great, Let's we appreciate see. your help. So he goes outside and leaves you to it. So, so I assume you're going to look for yes, Mr. de Comte Fenwick. Mm -hmm. Count Fenwick. <laughs> um. It doesn't take you more than 10 minutes uh, before you find the actual record of him being admitted. Okay. Um, but it's basically just a leisure, and you can see that the name is, in, even though it's in French, it's still English lettering, so Fenelik, um, which happened uh, exactly the way that it's described. Um, from that point on, you need I, I need you to do a, a library role. So, or, or whoever, which one of you? I make it. I make it. So. Okay. Um, you you search. Oh, well, you know what? You're searching. Okay. Let's jump to uh, uh, Dr. Xavier because I can't imagine that he's going to spend hours uh, with the nurse. But, um, she is uh, acting very busy putting things together and writing stuff down and checking oh, charts. Oh my goodness. You're going to make this hard for me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, let me just roll up my sleeves a little bit here. I am going to be a thorn on her side for a little while. I'm going to um, ask her questions. I already know how to say bonjour and practice. And I know she's going to get irritated with me and send me away. So um, That takes her about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's like, she's like, Monsieur, I am extraordinarily busy. Uh, if you have something to ask, ask it and then leave, please. I don't say anything. I think I'll. I, I think I'll just head down to the records room now. <laughs> All right. So you you head down to the records room. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So you make your way back down. You you find. Do it. I see anything? Yeah. You know, because uh, you know. Um. I'll, I'll wait down. I'll try to you know, like for a spot hidden. 
see anything go ahead, strange. Go ahead, a, go ahead and do a spot hidden, and I'll, I'll give you something. Okay, percentage. Is it up there? Yep. It's 26. 26. So it says my spot hidden is... Oops, 60. Yeah, so you're fine. So I made it by half. What you notice... Uh, based on some of your medical training, not medical training, but just your, your the fact that you deal with people, mm -hmm. is there, there seems to be a bit of gloom. Uh, the, the employees may have very well liked Dr. Deplace very much, and now that he's gone, they've got Dr. LaRue in charge, and he seems to be very, very serious, and he's going to put things in, in order. order and uh, they seem overly occupied with worrying you know about what they're doing making sure they get everything right um, they don't seem like a whole bunch of happy employees and this is in general throughout there realize that there are probably 300 employees at this facility it's a huge facility um, and you just keep encountering it over and over. There's no smiles. There's no, you know. You also notice a few of the orderlies are pretty well built, probably because you know, it's kind That's of a danger. A, you know, it's, it's yeah. an asylum. And, um, and as you make your way down the stairs, you have to ask a few times where the records are, and, and they'll, they sort of point. They can get what you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> um, the last person that you see as you get to the bottom of the stairs is uh, Paul Mandrin, who's uh, uh, he's looking at something on a chart, but he's he's just sort of leaning up against the wall. Uh, can I sneak up on him and kind no. of look behind him? His, no. He's sideways, ah. uh, and you're coming right towards him. So. Okay. Bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Uh, your friends are inside the, the record room. I will uh, make Adol chat with him for a little bit, and I will ask how long he's how long he's been uh, working here, mm -hmm. and uh, just you know, you know. And I'm trying to look at what his um, what's on well, his chart. Um, or does he hold it hold it close to him? No, it just looks like a schedule for cleaning and. Uh, and stuff like that. But uh, what do you want to ask him? I want to ask him uh, basically where do they. Well, just just the ask him. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Monsieur, Monsieur, where where do they keep the uh, the criminals, the dangerous people? Uh, Monsieur, the the whole institute is dangerous people. <laughs> well, you notice the... you notice that there's a big couple of scratches. Oh no! Oh no! Ah, oh, and I kid with him like love bites. Yeah, no, I I haven't gotten bitten this month, but uh, <laughs> I did get scratched. Oh my goodness! I this is um, it's just part of the job. It's somewhat dangerous, but I'm oh. I'm hoping to uh, not be here for. Too much longer. Uh, I've been here three years. Um, I'm looking for a better job, but uh, I'm also doing a very good job because I'm I'm very well. I, I want to have a good reference from here. This is a uh, there's, there's a saying amongst us that uh, if you can work at Charenton for a few years, then you can work <laughs> anywhere. You know, uh, back in the states in America, I'm writing a book. Are you? Yes, about asylums and, and, and the, the people that work in them. You're very interesting. I noticed that you speak English very well. Would oh, yeah, you mind this is maybe one doing of the a few? I took in, in, in school, yes. Would you mind doing maybe a few translations for me? I mean, I will pay you, of course. Uh, do you have something you want to translate? Uh, when I come across it, I, I definitely will, and I would like to pass that on. Would you be amicable to being paid for your time? Um, I don't see why not. Uh, Wonderful. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that my English is that good, but. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, 
you could probably find a college student who has studied better than I have. Ah, but you know medicine. You're a man of science, are you not? I'm a man Yeah, I, I don't really do any of the medicine part. Oh. But I you just hold the patient down while somebody else does the medicine part. <laughs> but that's a very important job, is it not? Yeah, because they, they, the doctor doesn't want to get scratched in the face. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I'm going to check with my compatriots right now. Let me see if we can find anything. We miss you. And I All zip right. on in and see what they've if they've gotten so anything. You, you zip in just after they have found the first record that shows that Benelik was admitted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, what I was going to say is, is over the course of the next maybe two hours of, oh looking, of looking through everything you can find, you can't find anything. Not a, not a single reference, not, not where he was kept, not, um, not if he died or when he died. Hmm. Um, which is extremely unusual because otherwise their records are pretty well kept. So we only have an admit, admittance record for the right. mentally ill. That right. is it. Doesn't say where he was assigned. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Which is odd. Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul. We miss you. I am, he kind of, he I, comes in. Yes, Monsieur. You have a I am. I am so embarrassed. Do you believe in ghosts? Um, not really, Monsieur. Have you heard any tales here? What sort of tales, Monsieur? Of ghosts? Of ghosts or spooky things have, that people we see. We have people who see demons, monsters, uh, angels. Uh, they speak to God. They speak to Napoleon. They, <laughs> they speak, speak to, to Napoleon. Napoleon. Of course. Ah. Uh, this is an insane asylum, Monsieur. Ah. You you have a, a sense of humor, Monsieur. I didn't oh, see of course I have a sense do. of humor. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but do you have anything that cannot be explained, such as someone that claims that they saw a demon, perhaps, or an angel, and has marks and that was no, tied monsieur. down? No, no, Monsieur. No. No what doctor you... here has ever seen a ghost. Monsieur. Good, <laughs> good, because I would have to recommend him. Yes, yes, Paul. Absolutely. Have you ever heard any stories of a possible, like, a man-dog? Uh, maybe he was a patient here and escaped recently? A man-dog, monsieur? Well, yeah, well, I, know, he, I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> I'm just throwing the idea out there that maybe there were, you had a patient that was, you know, he thought he, he, thought he was part man, monsieur, thought he was part dog. I have to ask you a question, monsieur. Um, are, you, uh, are you all uh, writers? Are you with the newspaper or anything like that? Oh, no, no, no. no and uh, I will definitely show my credentials to Miskatonic U University proudly and, and uh, whip it, you know, bring something out and, you know, hold it up to him that I'm, I'm a professor. Like I explained, I'm writing a book and I just writing about ghosts and strange things. Those and things, the there, are, there are no ghosts here. They are just just crazy people. Well, sometimes crazy people think that they see ghosts, and those are the stories that I choose to write about because I'm trying to bridge that gap. Well, I'm not, I'm not. You would have to get some. You'd have to get uh, permission for something like that. I'm sure you'd find an extensive amount of nonsense in this place. I'm sure. That I'm sure. Have you found the records you're looking for? Uh, it doesn't seem that we have had well, any we, hits. Well, what we have here is his, uh, this particular document here, and I hand it to him. And I said it's, it's kind of strange because um, it doesn't. There's no other documents uh, for this particular patient. It's as if as soon as he was admitted, he. So you have, you have, you have, you have searched the records after this time. Not, well, within that time period. Not going beyond his well. There, are, there, are, there's the possibility of perhaps two two reasons. Uh, one is, of course, the French Revolution occurred immediately after this date. Um, it is possible that some of the records got lost, but I find that one less less. 
it may be that your uh, what is this uh, Count uh, Fenelik that yes. um, he may have uh, died uh, perhaps almost immediately after being admitted and uh, before the paperwork got into motion as we would say and uh, it just he probably got thrown into a common burial and uh, they didn't bother writing anything else down there would be no reason to there was no treatment there was no he well, was never from, placed into a room or anything like that so from from other sources um, we've learned that this particular patient was uh, quite violent with the staff at the time as well as some of the patients and that he was placed in solitary confinement for a while mm. so according to other sources he didn't die immediately well we only have the sources for the hospital itself and mm. you, know, you might say that uh, the horse's mouth probably tells the truer story can you show me where solitary confinement is and how many units you have I'm sure it's a lockdown unit but may I have permission to... I don't know what solitary confinement is. This is uh, a hospital, monsieur. Every, every room... All of our patients are dangerous, or not all of them, mm. but most of them are dangerous, and those who are dangerous are kept in, in single rooms by themselves. Otherwise, they'd kill each other. Ah, uh, makes sense. Or, I mean, there, there is a part of it where they, you know, they bring in derelicts and people off the street. They have kind of a common area, um, but uh, that is probably one of the more dangerous places. Uh, you're going to find uh, people who are mildly insane and people who are completely insane all thrown into the same. That, that's, that's in fact where I got the scratch. I guess now scratches on uh, the side. <laughs> <laughs> which which side is it? <laughs> Um, it's where side. is where is the uh, where are the common graves, and are, are they or every it's, fifty years? It's, it's the common or, graves. Or, um, yes. I actually don't know, Monsieur. They they take the bodies away from us. Uh, I didn't know if it was contracted or. Yes, or something. it's contracted. I'm not sure. Uh, they probably burn them now. They don't uh, bury them any longer. Very good. Well, gentlemen. Um, but I don't see. Um, yeah, if there's no other record of this man, then then it's very likely. Uh, as I say, he probably died. He. It sounds like he was not a popular man. So. Probably not. I think what he did was he upset the monarchy, at the time. No. Perhaps. Uh, you know, we do have those stories of uh, putting the man in the iron mask. Uh, who knows? But, yeah. Uh, Iron Maidens. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I'm not really into rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, but of course. Um, is there anything else I can do for you, Mr. No, gentlemen, do you think we should uh, just head on back to the hotel and call it a day until we find something? Yeah, I think we should yeah. get that end. Yeah, that, that, that sounds fine. Well, here's uh, my, uh, I wrote down my address, and uh, uh, you you mentioned uh, to translate for you. If, yes. Um, Merci, monsieur. This is where I live. Wonderful. Of course, I work here most, I, I work here uh, six days out of the week. I'm oh. On Sundays. You've got, you've got, you've got a light schedule, I see. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, um, I will be definitely be in contact. I bid you, uh, I bid you adieu for now, and I thank you for your time. <laughs> and so he he takes you back out. Oh, I say, uh, Monsieur, we we can find a way uh, back. It's not so hard. Um, it's the same way I'm going anyway. So very well, very well, sir. Yeah, I had a question I wanted to ask the group away from him. Oh. Yeah, well, let's just get out of here right now. We can always come back. Well, that's well, he, it regarding uh, that. As, uh, as, as you're going, uh, he turns a corner and goes a different way. He says, au revoir, messieurs. Au revoir. Au revoir. Excellent. So I just wanted to say um, to Eldridge, um, 
you know, we have this gentleman's journal. Um, are, are we actually leaving the premises with it, or is this something maybe we could look? I think Eldridge is going to keep the journal. Okay. <laughs> Um, since he's gone, you guys want to do a little bit of uh, investigating while we're still here? Let's look, search for the basement area. Mm. Little. Okay, I'm game. We, uh, we we'll, lost? We'll just, we'll just take him. Yeah, we can just get lost. Or... Yeah, well, if, if we get caught, then we say, well, we, we got lost. We made mm -hmm. a long time. But let's... Uh, Let's head down to the, the, the cellar area, the, the basement. Okay, lead the way. Yeah, well, I'm not sure he's going to lead you anywhere. This, you ever been into a gigantic hospital? <laughs> no, not like this. I don't want to. I really don't want to go. I'd rather stay outside. I thought, you were, I thought you said you were game. Come on. Yeah. Good luck. But. Um, so let me just ask. Um, so what was the what's the intent there? I mean, what are we hoping to find in the basement? Anything. Well, I, I, well, I understand. Maybe a clue. Maybe a Scooby Doo snack. I don't know. Well, the, uh, the, the the idea is that um, this count was placed uh, beneath the, the hospital in some solitary confinement. So if we were able to find his area where he was kept, perhaps there are clues there. I think I'm hoping to find more clues in the diary that um, that we have in town. I'm thinking, think can... I'm thinking that if he had a piece of this artifact that we're looking for and it started to drive him mad and he's locked up in a basement, he might have scrawled some clues or something, some, some things that he might have been hearing in his head from this particular artifact. But mm -hmm. like uh, Paul said, they're just rooms. We won't know which one. I'm thinking that the doctor's documents might lead us to something, hopefully. If okay. not, then yes. Okay, um, I'll follow but, you. Then. But uh, because I don't know which way to go. There's over 300 employees, so that tells me probably with 300 employees, more than likely, we're looking at about 1,000 patients. Easily. That's, yeah. that's, that's 1,000 people... To the way I look at it, three. I don't want to get. I don't want to get caught in a. And they're all. Vi they're I all mean, violent. I mean. Uh, they're all violent. Let's not say, all of them. Uh, but not all of them, of course. But, you but know, maybe a good eighty-five percent of them. It's hard. Violent. Hard to tell violent from not violent. Just. Yes. Are Are you going to hurt me? Somewhere. No. Okay. Let me turn my back to you. <laughs> Here's. Uh, I I I put this up last time. First. Mm -hmm. That's just the front end of it. So you can see it's already four, five stories tall, and you know it's probably got a thousand. That's a lot. Of, that's that's a lot of rooms to go through. Here's here's an idea. Okay. I say let's go back to the library and see if there's any old um, records or maps of the old asylum. That'll okay. At least give us a bit of a floor plan. Um, you're, talk, you're talking about the military. Yeah, you're talking about the military police one. Not necessarily. We can probably find it in the other library. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and it looks like this building has been standing for a long time. So oh, yeah. So it, it may not have changed much. Um, the other idea too is to see if there are any sort of sewer or tunnels that uh, lead and in out of the uh, the area. Oh, that's a that's a very good idea. Yeah, we could do that too. And we could probably find that down in the catacombs. There might be a way to lead us into the uh, hospital from there. But this Maybe. is just a wild guess. This is just shot in the dark. Okay, that sounds good. Might be worth a look. Yeah. All right. So you're gonna go back to your hotel. Please. What time right. is it? Um. I lost track. Um, say so we got there. What time did we get there? Let's just say it was, it was, it was, about it was, okay. two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, as you were walking out the front door, um, 
you notice Paul, uh, Paul Mandrin, is uh, leaning against the wall over towards the side and smoking a cigarette. Or I don't know how the French smoke, maybe like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to offer him um, a, a cigarette because I'm a smoker myself. And it's an American, I'll, I'll offer him like an American cigarette and everything. Oh. Thank you, Monsieur. Uh, lucky strikes. They, they might be a good... Oh, good. absolutely. <laughs> Actually, and, I found um, somewhere a whole list of 1923 cigarette brands. But I don't oh, no I, kidding. I don't remember yes. where I put it. I actually had uh, the graphics for the fronts of them so that I could make them if we were... Oh, that's awesome. Them. No, that's awesome. Uh, um, I can still remember Lucky Strikes. Yeah, my mom smoked Lucky Strikes. <laughs> And cool, and but I digress. Cool. <laughs> I digress. Um, uh, so he says, oh, oui, monsieur, thank you very much. Uh, here, why don't you take one of my French cigarettes? Oh, uh, absolutely. And um, we'll just, we'll just, I'll, I'll just give him some idle chit-chat. And I, I'm going to ask him, uh, do the catacombs go out this far? Oh, you are talking about the, the Roman catacombs? The yes, like Paris? the aqueduct and the catacombs. I don't, I don't believe they come out this far. Um, oh. They are mostly under the, the main city itself. Uh, we are a few miles out, but I don't know. Uh, you know, the, they say they are extremely extensive. I'm not sure they've all been mapped Explored. out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Have you ever heard of anybody uh, going down there and disappearing and not coming back? Have you, you know, heard any stories about that? I'm sorry. Have I heard of, any, of people going into the catacombs? Yeah, and just getting lost. Well, there, yeah. there. We always hear stories about, you know. I'm not sure whether they are all true, uh, but um, uh, we know that they always warn the people to stay on the path and not to leave because uh, uh, they could get very well, e very easily lost. Mm. Um, they are very complicated and. Uh, and they're also not very safe. It's you know, uh, you have old structures like that. They can they can fall down for no uh, no reason at all. Mm. And, uh, I think there's also multiple levels, as I recall. Multiple levels. Yes. Uh, so they go down quite. They're quite extensive. Of course, now they're all filled with bones. Not all of them, but most of them are filled with bones. So quite quite an interesting. Uh, have you been? Hmm? Um, have you been? It was one of the few things we we we. Uh, Looked at when we first came to Paris. Yeah, most people do. It's good. You've seen the, You've been to the Louvre. Yes, yes. We have nothing like that in, in good old England, but it, this is quite uh, quite interesting here. Yes, it's it's a, it's a it's a lovely city, especially in the summertime. Right now, it's kind of cold. Yeah. Apparently, I I think uh, I think I. Oh. I don't know if they had weather forecasts. He says, <laughs> he says, you know, if, if you, from the from the smell of the air and from the look of the, the, the light, I'd say we're probably in for a storm probably in the next day or two. Uh, it's probably going to snow. Oh, no. I know. But, uh, you know, I, I actually have tomorrow off, so uh, uh, if it snows, it snows. Mm. If it doesn't. It could be very bad if people are stuck in the asylum, of course. I, I, I will say this, sir. Uh, if it doesn't snow, find us at a cafe down uh, downtown, and we'll we'll treat you to a meal and some good coffee and wine, uh, just for your the little help that you, you've given us today. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Um, I mean, plus, I get to learn and, and meet uh, one of the locals here. That's be quite nice. What... Uh, he sort of looks around, and he's like, I'm "Sure, that sounds that sounds wonderful." Um, I, I think we are becoming friends, but uh, uh, considering uh, the new director, um, don't mention to anyone that you know you have been talking to me. I don't think that he would like, uh, it's quite uh, especially if, especially if he finds out that you are writing a book. Yes, I understand. Uh, that's that's. I did a spot hidden roll. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan to see if my girlfriend is looking down at me or something. 
No, you can't even see her office from here. Okay, good. Somewhere good. There. I just want to make sure. And um, and he gave us his address. And does he have a telephone? No, I mean, it's, it's kind of rare. I don't have a phone. Um, however, the building I'm in has a phone. So if uh, if I ring you, that, let me, let me write that down. Yeah, they can they can yell for me and uh, and call me. Where are you staying in in, in Perry? Well, that's what I was going to give him. I was going to go ahead and write down the the hotel, and of course my name, and that um, to contact me or ring me tonight. Okay. And I will try to ring you tonight around. What time do you get off, and what time do you get home? I say I'm off in about two hours, Mister. Okay, I will try to ring you in four hours. Give you time okay. to get home. Oui. All right. And then. I, I leave the area and not even look back. Okay. So you all leave? Yeah. Yeah, because right. I, I understand why he's nervous, and I don't want to give him any grief at work because this is his workplace. All right. Um, and as you do that, you know, he puts out the cigarette and he goes inside the building. Um, okay. All right. So you head on back to your hotel and. Uh, you arrived on, there. You know, on the shortly. ride back, is there any words that we can recognize out of that damn file? Uh, you are you, you keep saying file. You mean the journal? The journal. Excuse me. Yeah, I keep saying file. Um, no, it's in French. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, oh, I recognize the date. I, I recognize the date. You do recognize <laughs> the dates, yeah. Bon day. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, you notice that the dates are uh, are right up until uh, let's see when the last date is. Uh, the last entry in there is uh, January fourteenth. Wow! So just, just a couple days ago. Yeah. It's probably the last thing that he wrote before. Hmm. You said that he died of a stroke, right? I didn't say anything. I mean, not you, but the, I, I bet the, the newspapers say something about him dying of a stroke. Mm. I don't recall. I don't remember that. Uh, pull it up. Hold on. Um, Uh, we mourn the loss of our esteemed director, blah, 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 a man of his profession, his tragic loss. It was an accident. Okay. It doesn't say. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so you have arrived back at your hotel. And what would you like to do? It's now about, what did we say before, 3 o'clock? It was about... 2.30, 3 o'clock. All right, let's say it's about 3.30. You guys are probably hungry. Yeah, I, I want to eat, but if Mr. Eldridge would um, let me take a peek at that, um, does there any medical symbols or anything, like milligrams or, or ounces? It, like, no, this looks like just looks like notation. Okay. Just, just right. that he's writing. Um, what do you guys but, think about maybe getting Remy in on this? No, I was thinking about the, the um, well, what? I, yeah, I mean, I, I would suggest Remy. I mean, he's been trustworthy so far. Okay. I would say no, but if you guys want to say yes, then that's, that's up to you. Oh, by the way, the man did not die mysteriously. He had a tragic accident. You've got <laughs> these Americans that have a journal of his. Yeah. Does that seem kind of fishy to you? Yeah. I don't like police officers from foreign nationals. Yeah, you have, you make a good point. The question but, is, is that how are you going to translate the journal then? Yeah, right. that's that's the that's the hard part. So what I was thinking about doing is, if I can recognize his name, block out the name. Or, go ahead. Actually, this is this will take longer, but just get a French to English dictionary. And every word we come across, we'll go through the dictionary. To that up. doesn't work as well as you think that it would, because you don't understand French grammar either. 
True, but you can kind of piece things together. Yeah. Hmm. You end up with sentences like, I threw my mother down the hallway a kiss. <laughs> because right. that's French grammar. <laughs> yeah, but then you can... But then when you read it that way, then you could try to decipher it to make sense in English. Mm, good try. Well, I mean, I, I mean, at least out, you know, out of character. That's how I, <laughs> that's how I do Japanese. Like, Tell you um, what, do a psychology role, and we're you're doing it on uh, on Remy. Yeah. A psychology role for me. All right. All of you. Oh, okay. I'm, I have a decent psychology. Uh, not that decent. 97. Oh, shit. I have a critical success. It's a oh, zero four. Oh, good. That's, a a four. That's what I was hoping for, was somebody to have a critical success. Um, in your assessment of Remy, uh, he comes across to you from the work that he's done with you so far as being extremely reliable and discreet. He doesn't oh, share okay. your information with anybody else because, you know, that's that's part of what makes his job, ma makes being what he is a good way. Okay, okay. So you think you can trust him. You, you, you feel pretty confident that you could. Um, instead of meeting him at the library, um, I suggest that we have him come up to one of the rooms and translate right then and there. Okay, so you're going to send a message to him? Absolutely. Please. All right. Although, didn't we want to go to the library to check on... Uh, you guys can. I'd rather I'd rather sit this one out. Well, let's, you know what? Um, let's, let's have Remy come over and uh, translate that. We can go to the library tomorrow. And then we'll have... So, yeah. yeah. Then we'll have more, more questions, but... Correct. Also, it'll hopefully shed a little light on our new friend because I don't know if you noticed it. I did when I was cruising the halls. The tone of the uh, institution has changed. It doesn't, it isn't like, it's. it, it looks like it's more of a militaristic, a very, uh, a very depressed, I mean, yes, you're in an assail asylum, but um, it could be, it is worse. It's not better. It's it's it could worse. Be, it could be that. It could be just the simple changing of the guard, where the new one comes in and says, "Oh, I'm going to put down these strong rules." Well, sorry. Um, yeah. It, it could be, you know, I'm going to put down these strong laws and strong rules, and everybody's going to be, you know, just to show that he's in charge, and he may let eventually. That would that would be completely in line with what people would do. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you're going to go to the library. Is that what you're going to do? Uh, no, we're gonna, was, and you're going to meet. We're going to wait for for Remy. We'll do the library tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm there. That's right. Yeah, you, I, I got it mixed up. You guys switched to back and forth. Uh, so Remy's going to come to the hotel, and then tomorrow you're going to go to the library. Correct. Hopefully, yes. yes. We'll have a, a, we're hoping to have a bit more. Information. And you're going to call Remy. You're going to call Paul tomorrow. Correct. Have dinner or lunch. Which is breakfast. which is you no know, what it's his day off. So if we get anything out of this document, we can start pumping him full of questions later tonight to plan for his day off. And I think he'll I think he'll be able to a little bit more relax and speak openly. And since we have Remy there, if there's something that he cannot say. We already have somebody that will translate for us. And that was my plan. Okay. So you send your telegram, and what are you going to do while you're waiting for a response? Um, order some good wine and sit back and drink on some wine. And <laughs> you probably have a late lunch. Yeah. Okay. You have a very nice good late things lunch. about the French cheese. Oh, yeah, some French of that good stuff, too. The real stinky stuff. I love, yeah. it. love it so much. And some so, of their peach trees. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to my fridge right now. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyways, um uh, you guys eat and you're relaxing and you're sitting around. Um, do you want to 
discuss or go over anything before our friend arrives, Monsieur Remy. I, I ask. Uh, uh, no, I, I asked these these guys. I said, well, you know, while I was in the library last night, just going over some basic biology science stuff. What were you guys up to? <laughs> I actually don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, drinking brandy <laughs> and, and and reading and reading newspapers, um, because what I want to do is I want to ask Paul how the um, past director died. That's one of the things, but I didn't want to do it while he was there or around. So that's one of the questions I'm going to ask. Um, I can't think of anything else to investigate right now or anything else pressing. I don't think I'm holding out on anything. Maybe um, also while we're doing the lunch thing and waiting for Remy, uh, maybe I could find some place to get some film developed. Sounds great. Yeah, we had our right. uh, yeah, you had that. We had that discussion. Um, um, you asked the concierge, and uh, he says uh, there actually is a place because they've had other tourists ask. Um, and it's it's not too far. He directs you, like down the street and make a left, and there's a portrait studio. Uh, that um, for a price, they'll probably they'll probably develop your photo your your photo your your film for you. So well, is that what you do? Yeah, I think um, you know it shouldn't take long. I'll just you know just walk down there, drop the film off, uh, explain to them that you know we're just tourists and that I'm also a professional photographer and talk a little shop and just ask him to develop everything like even if it's just black or doesn't look like it's underexposed you know just develop it all and you know I'll pay for all the prints or whatever okay um, so they, they give you a price on that and uh, they tell you that it'll be done tomorrow okay great. Um, and well, he, um, sorry go ahead while he's doing that I, I would like to pick up from the general store or um, or some sort of pharmacy. I don't know what's... All I can remember in France was pharmacies on every corner near Notre Dame. Yeah, where there's, I was a of, there's a lot of pharmacies, yeah. Uh, uh, stuff like that is to pick up some twine, like for a kite, but not the kite, and some candles, just in case I choose to go back into, into the catacombs. And some okay. chalk. Get some chalk, too, while you're there. Ah, oh, good idea. And some okay. chalk. Seems reasonable that all those things you'd find at the at the store, the general store, whatever, the okay. the pharmacy, and a gun, um, a shotgun. Yeah, they're not gonna leave Patrick, you. Patrick, are you here? <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Patrick. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, as you guys are finishing those those little side jobs, mm -hmm. and you're walking back uh, to join. Uh, uh, Dr. Theodore Dawkins at the table in the hall in the in the, the dining area. Uh, you see Remy uh, coming up as well. So you all sort of go straight to where uh, uh, Dr. Dawkins is is sitting and relaxing, sipping coffee. All right. My coffee ran out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I just had like five. Cups and set it here. Wow! <laughs> this is what I do. Got a big, nice big old thermos. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw me last year, but I had one of those big, gigantic thermoses set. Oh, did you? Here. And uh, I don't know. I just I I I discover it about four days later and realize I hadn't drunk all the coffee. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> there was stuff floating on it, so <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um. It makes your coffee so, interesting. So Remy sits down with you, and he's like, uh, Messieurs, uh, you have something that you wanted me to look at. Yes, I have a uh, delicate document that I would like for you to uh, translate for us, if you could, please. I see. A, and, del a um, delicate document? Delicate in that uh, I should wear gloves? or No, the other kind of... Uh, I shouldn't ask any questions. Yes, exactly. I see. As I said. Well, 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 all right, let's see. 
Uh, this is uh, journal. Nice, you got yeah. me saying journal. <laughs> it's a it's a journal uh, from a doctor. Uh, let's see, Deplacé. Don't know that name. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and I'll, I'll present it, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll read it. That's okay. just as easy since he would be reading it. <clears throat> I'll send it to you tonight, uh, tomorrow. All right, uh, the journal of uh, Dr. Deplacé uh, excerpts. Uh, this is uh, January 11th. A dismaying event last night. A male nurse, one Martin Guimard of Fourth Ward, entered the cellars without authorization, and there, after, after suffering a painful wound to his right arm, collapsed. Another nurse, Paul Mandrine, who suspected Guimard of mischief, investigated his absence and after some time discovered Guimard on the floor in severe shock. Treatment was prompt and efficacious, but upon regaining consciousness this morning, Guimard began raving to me about being attacked. He seemed both paranoid and psychotic and had to be sedated. For the moment I have placed him in room 13, and notified his landlady of his indisposition. Alas, with Guimar was another man in alarming physical oh. condition. Sorry. What uh, was that? Sorry, ignore it. <laughs> alas, <laughs> alas, with Guimar was another man in alarming physical condition. I suspect I may have made a tragic mistake in hiring Guimar two years ago. He may have fallen into a pattern of advantage over the weaker patients. Many grave questions must be answered. January 12th. I began to question Guimar about his activities in the basement. Who was the stranger? Is he a patient? What is his name? How long has Guimar kept him down there? Had he done this to other patients? Had Guimar kept the stranger there for a long time? What had he planned to do? Had he given him nourishment? And how had the man survived? I am moving the stranger to my private wing, for the moment uh, treating the man as an inconsequential derelict until more evidence is found. January 13th. Even in a fresh bed, the stranger appearance is horrible, severely emaciated. Given small amounts of broth, he merely regurgitates it. He takes no nourishment, yet he lives in a catatonic state. Would uh, electroshock uh, revive him? January 14th. After several applications, a stranger woke, but so weakened that he could not move. Much of what he babbled was incomprehensible, but I did catch a few words it seemed in Greek and Latin. His words did have the cadence of real language and not glossolalia. Uh. What a mystery, man. I begin to think that we have tapped into some group mind or racial memory, as Carl Jung has described. After a few inconsequential notations, the journal ends. All the entries quoted are dated just before Deplacé's death. Wow. I'll wow. leave that open for a second in case yes. you want to make notes. Yes. Does anybody know what glossolalia means? Oh, yeah, like bullshit. It's kind of like uh, it's a real language and not like some bullshit or made-up language. Made-up, okay. You want to um, do a knowledge roll? Or we can do a knowledge roll. Hey, <laughs> let's try a knowledge roll. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just... I mean, yeah, I'm just assuming. Let me do a knowledge roll. And I made it. Okay. Glossolali is speaking in tongues. Yeah. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. okay. Which, from your occult studies, you know, happens. Uh, it's uh, something that uh, classically shamans and witchcraft people and people like that get possessed by the spirits and speak in tongues. Hmm. So we have this mystery man. Not only that, but Paul knows about him. Yeah, well, I'm glad we'll, we'll have him away. Um, sorry, 
the cellar. Although, like you said, we should be careful. You know, hey, Paul, we stole your ex-boss's journal. Yeah. Yeah, that would be something else. Okay. Um, Do we need that anymore? No, I think I've got my... What's that? Uh, private wing, he mentions. Right, it's the director's wing. Is anybody else thinking ghoul? Oh, there's no such things. <laughs> well, I'm. I mean, honestly, I'm thinking. Um, that this might be our, our guy. This might be the guy that we're looking for. Um, that would this, be... Well... Who, Fenelik? I'm just going out on my limb here. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, if they, they say if there's no record of him either being executed or buried or anything like that, um, it, it just might be. I mean, as unbelievable as it may sound, I mean, we've come across apparently someone who might have been around during the French Revolution down in the catacombs. So why would he be speaking Latin or Greek? I don't know. Well, Latin is a... Uh, oh, well, French derives from Latin, so... Um, okay, and he was around during the French I, Revolution. Yeah. But I'm just saying... Um, Hmm. Do we need that up anymore? No, we don't. Did that? Plus, we don't really know mm. his, his education. No, I guess not, Tom. But Tom, because if I don't get to look at my beautiful point, my beautiful face on the screen, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. Well, you know, I, I I understand, but what throws me off is the Latin and the Greek. But they did mention a hive type mind, so that is kind of interesting. I mean, we can only... Well, what what information do we know about this particular artifact that we're looking for? We know that it's just evil. Um, at least, you know, um, that's what now, we were told. Bear in, mind, bear in mind that uh, uh, Rami is sitting here with you. Yeah, guys! Remember that, <laughs> damn it! Watch what you, watch what you say! Because he can understand motherfucking English. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul, I mean, not Paul. Um, see, you Remy, got see. Remy looks like he's just dying to ask you questions, but he had prefaced this whole thing by saying that he wouldn't ask questions. <laughs> and I'm putting together the stuff that you've researched in your, you know, he knows all the research you did at the library. Remy, it looks like you have a question that you might want to ask. Perhaps we can answer it. Oui, monsieur. Um, whatever it is you are researching seems fascinating, monsieur. Uh, a French... Uh, uh, I, I'm just very intrigued, monsieur, as to what you are, what you are working on. Well, to tell you the truth, we are from the Arcane Society in Arkham, Massachusetts. What the, and we go around and we collect different types of lore from different areas around the world. And so right now... Are, you are like ghost hunters. Yes, but the whole thing is that we don't necessarily... I'm a skeptic when it comes to ghosts or whatever, but we're... we're Basically, we're going around trying to see if some of these things are true, if some of these things are. There's such things as monsters and things like that. Uh, and, you know, we have a friend here that writes, you know, these things down in books, and, you know, eventually he's going to come out okay. with a... Now you see this look sort of sweep over his face, like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm not really that interested in that bullshit. <laughs> but <laughs> Okay, like, oh, look, let me... That's all, miss you. Okay. Remy, um, my esteemed colleague, uh, colleague uh, spoke of this secret society. Look, I'll just I'll just put it out, Frank. A we society. are. Well, he he started spouting off everything that who 
who's financing who's kind of financing us. I, do, I really didn't want him to do that, so I'm I'm trying but to cover. Hear, I mean, outside the character. Yeah, go ahead. It sounds like bullshit. So like he's he's asking questions to us, and I spelled it off something. I spelled it off the truth, but that I made the truth sound like it was bullshit. So now I he's know. no longer interested in asking us questions. I, I, I know. I thought maybe you were working on some sort of historical work, but uh, uh, yes, I am. If you're ghost hunters, then no, I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm are you? Are, aren't on. you? I. Dr. Giles Xavier am not a ghost hunter. I am a historian. I, I, I am a lover I, of I, antiques. I, I apologize, monsieur. It is uh, okay. Do you, need, do you need anything else that translated, monsieur? Not right now, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so, so right. much. I'm going to, uh, I have to go to a, a rally. I, I, I will talk to you tomorrow or whenever yes. you need me. Yes. Remy, right? Real quick, Remy, have you heard of? Do you know anything about po Poise? Uh, it's about. It's not too far from here. Um, I don't know. I've never been there. Okay, that's all. I was just wondering if you maybe. We'll check out. We'll check out that battle later. That little skirmish, in pre-revolutionary war. We'll we'll get a chance and we'll see if we can find something. Yes, uh, Remy, thank you for your time for translating. We miss you so much. And he leaves. Mm. I can't tell if that went well or not. <laughs> it did not. I think it did not. I think it did not. You won't be asking any questions in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he's looking at us like we're a bunch of idiots. Hey, look. But that's okay. That's yeah, okay. We're doctors. Look, but you have, you have but money, monsieur. <laughs> look, look at it this way. Look at it this way. He thinks that we're crazy, that we're going around looking for ghosts or whatever, we're ghost hunters or whatever. He doesn't believe in it. He thinks that we're kind of crazy about that. So now he's, he'll just stick to translating our stuff. And he's like, as oh, a wow. Right. As a, well, but he'll say, well, yes, more of this crazy ghost nonsense. And he'll roll his eyes and he'll translate. And treat us like idiots. That's fine, but we're paying him to just translate. So yeah, well, now, it doesn't say... No, no, but think about it this way. He will no longer be interested in, say, following us, trying to see what we're doing. Because he's like, oh, these guys are crazy ghost hunter guys who believe in supernatural stuff. Yeah. So now we don't have anybody. We don't have to worry about, one, somebody following us, getting to, you know, into our business, two, somebody getting hurt just in case something does happen. So what I did was... Tell the truth, and the truth didn't sound true to him. So next time, leave me out of your truth, <laughs> please. please. When, well. the monsters chew, when the monsters chew it on you, just leave me out of your truth, please. <laughs> just scream, just scream like Corey does. <laughs> so, what would you like? To no, but I, I I understand what Wayne was trying to do and everything, and that's great and that's fine, but um. Giles is irked. Richard is not, but Giles is irked because <laughs> he's a professional. And he doesn't ever want to be looked in, in, in a bad light. So um, uh, Giles is now distraught. He's going to take some time to go get some sherry down there and try to figure out how to deal with this situation before any one of us rings Paul and, and figures out what they're going to say to him. Because to Giles, this is a wild rabbit. Are we going to capture him? Are we going to slaughter him? Are we going to uh, make this little rabbit run? There's, there's nothing even remotely secret about the Arcane Society. There's 200 people in this Arcane Society. No, no, society. I'm, talking, I'm talking about what we know of the journal. That's what I'm worried about because if somebody likes telling the truth, we're now thieves. And well, that, as I say, and you just didn't get any kind of feeling from Ramy that he would tell right. anybody. Right? No, no, no. But I just don't. I just don't want Mr. Dawkins to go ahead and to. Um, All right. Uh, well, tell well, the truth. Too much. Okay. All right. What would you guys um, like to do now? Now, on the other hand, what we do know 
we we just got a clue into Remy too, in that he seems very interested in history too. So, mm -hmm. you know, that we might be able to use that at a later point to bring him in. I'll be right back. Okay. Hmm. We take a two minute break. Perfect. Unless you guys want to just discuss what you're gonna do. I mean that's that's not a bad idea. Um like we, we never oh. really knew how to approach Remy before, but mm -hmm. now we kinda know that we can trust him to some degree. We know his motivation now is a little bit more on, you know, the educational, historical Cle right. clearly we lost him with the supernatural, so Yeah, but you know, that, that worked in our favor, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I know mm -hmm. Giles is, is a bit distraught from that, but mm -hmm. one, we're not in England or America, so his reputation still stands. And, you know, who who's going to believe some college students saying, oh, these guys believe in ghosts? Mm -hmm. Especially if he has a strong reputation in America and in Britain. So you shouldn't worry about it too, too much. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, for the safety, you know, we do go into some dangerous situations, even if it's not supernatural. Um, we can have just some crazy people, some derelicts, you know, that we might come across that might pose danger. We mm -hmm. can take care of ourselves, at least I think we can. Um, I don't know about young Remy, uh, and I don't want to see him hurt. So he thinks we're crazy, thinks we're just loony. Stupid Americans. Yeah. How about it? Well, let's stay skeptical. What do you, what do you guys want to say to Paul? I don't know. Is it is it worth trying to bring him along with us to Poise? No, I don't think he's really involved. Okay. Not that, but um, we could we could ask him. Um, Only because it do. wouldn't hurt to have somebody that we could translate. Yeah. It um. I will say it wouldn't wouldn't hurt if we asked them, you know, maybe the last few days of the previous director of the asylums, uh, his activities, you know, what was going on in his mind, you know, things like that. Anything strange that happened around there. I mean, I, I say we, we question them after a few bottles of wine, get them a little, you know, loosen up a bit. Yeah, and, that would uh, make that would make more sense after a few bottles of wine because if you just come at them and. Right, right. Say, hey, how did the director die and and all of this? So, yeah. So yeah, maybe we should take him um, with us because yeah, he would be at least a a good translator, long yeah. as we can um, communicate effectively with him mm -hmm. and just see how um, we'll have to watch our line of questioning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just I to will. remind you, though, that he's only got one day off a week. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, place so, is going to be it's going to be more than a day trip. I mean, it's twenty miles is more than a day. Well, you're going to have to take the train out there, and then you're going to have to investigate, and who knows how long that will take. And then we'll have to wait. There. There's nothing that says you're going to come back in an hour. We've we've got less than an hour in this radio show. We should be able to do it. <laughs> um. I will let you, Giles, I'll, I will let you um, take the lead. Um, I'll do follow-up questions, but I'll let you take the lead when you're questioning uh, Paul. No, I know. It, it, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's over, it's over and it's done with. We're skeptics first. Of course. And that's what I, I want him to take us as serious professionals. Yeah. And that's it. But I, I do understand there's, yeah, I realize there's no secret to our society. But I just don't want to flaunt it out there because the questions that arise to me are: We ran across a skinned man in a library. We don't know if it has anything to do with what we're investigating. That's what worries me, my friend. Hmm. Because well, here's the thing: oh. Remy, Remy was getting a little too close. Not only that, but I, I believe you let him. Uh, I don't think you took out the piece of skin, but you yeah. you had the translation that was on in his skin, and he didn't know um, right. the the Turkish language, but a friend of his did. Yeah, and we like again, you know, we're bringing them in, and we're not letting them know what's going on. Agreed. At Agreed. the very at the very least, even telling the truth, even if he doesn't believe it, 
you can say, oh, I'm going to kind of stay away from these guys unless they really just need me to translate something. So he's no longer going to be a target for us. At least that's what I'm, at least that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to you know, accomplish here. Okay. So what do you want to talk about with this Martin guy? What do you think? Orderly of the Fourth Ward. You're talking about Paul, right? No. You're talking about Martin. Martin um, Gunmart. Yeah. And um, I wonder if they still have him on the list as an orderly because he's been taken away. Yeah, I haven't. The, the, the uh, journal doesn't say anything further about it. Um, perhaps if we're we're talking to Paul, and like I said, we can loosen them up a bit. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we could put Poise on the back burner and then pursue the information at the hospital still. Yeah, we can do that. I would. I know it's like one day, so uh, let's not burn his one day unless he calls in for a six day for us. I don't know. Oh, I would like to. I would like to go ahead and hunt at the. Um, we can always catch him at work, okay? Yeah. So we can always talk to him about this. Let's go out to Poise and spend okay. our time out there. What do you guys think? Hmm. I know we won't have a translator, but let's just go out there and, and just nose around. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it up to a vote, but again, I'm going a little outside of character. Um, do you want to have the other other members of our team with us when we go out to Poise or absolutely yes so I mean right now we can get as much information as we can before we go out there and then maybe next session the other two will be here so we all go out to, to Poise well I, I want to remind you too that it's in your head that Sherrington Asylum is a few you know just a few minutes away whereas Poise is probably an hour away Okay, so let's let's invite him over and get him drunk or whatever and talk shit. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's the plan. I guess that's the. I guess that's the plan. We might we actually might find out something more interesting in giving us a bit more information before we go out to Poison. Yeah. Well, let's see. All right. Okay. So, anything else this evening? No. No. Okay. Um, uh, give Mr. Eldridge back his his uh, journal that he he acquired. Okay. And uh, Eldridge and Everett both agree with everything that you said. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, they just they just sat there and kept their mouth shut all this time. <laughs> um, finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. I got a word in edgewise. <laughs> um. All right, so nothing more this evening. I assume you guys go to bed and you get up the next morning. Check the newspaper, please. Uh, nothing of interest in the newspaper. Um, I, I will remind Frank to uh, stop at the photography shop that you went to to pick up your developments. Yep. So we're on January 20th, correct? Correct. Correct. Just making sure. Okay. Um, it's it's morning, so you're having breakfast. Uh, what are you going to do? Did the photographer place give me a time, like afternoon maybe, or they they said probably in the afternoon. Okay. I mean, you brought it to them in the afternoon. Yeah, so. yeah. Twenty four hours. Um, I'm gonna read the newspaper and just uh, spend some time. Probably at the drugstore, seeing what drugs I can acquire. No sodium pentothal. Nope. Um, at the drugstore, you can acquire probably anything that you would need um, as a doctor. Yeah, and that's probably what I'll do. Is I'll just top off my top off my bag, and I will look into uh, acquiring a um, a firearm for Alonzo. Uh, you don't have a license, so it, it, would take, it would take them three days to give you a license, and they're kind of reluctant to do that to foreigners who want. Oh yeah, I can imagine so. So yeah. I'm gonna have to find a uh, a different way later on then. Okay. Who has a gun? Uh, we all have guns. Okay. 
Oh, at least I think we all do. I, I, I definitely do. I'm hearing a whirring sound. Not me on this end. Could it be a fan or it's, something? It's, no, I think it's a mic. And the easiest way to do that real quickly is, Jeff? Well, I don't hear it now. <laughs> there you go. That's it. But I don't hear it. I was hearing that now thing. I hear it, and he's off. I can hear it. Okay. How about me, then? Well, I, I don't hear it now, so turn it back on. We can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Are you saying something dirty? <laughs> <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> I kept telling you. Okay, everybody to, race. To get underneath cover. As soon as you hear it, everybody mute, and then we still won't know who it is. Exactly. All right. It's not that, that big a deal. Um, all right. So now what are you going to do? You've had your breakfast. What, what are your plans for the day? Are you going to – well, I'm not going to suggest. You, you tell me. I think – go on. I'm sorry. Uh, ring uh, ring um, Paul up. At uh, at that house and see if they can get a hold of him and ask him to come out to us. Okay, um, you ask the concierge. The concierge makes the call. Um, takes about fifteen minutes uh, uh, to locate him, and and the message is delivered. So beautiful, uh, beautiful. Uh, he responds that he'll be on the way. Okay, cool. Um, I can't think of anything else to do besides then. I well, you're you're all sitting down. Uh, uh, it's kind of the, the the little restaurant spills into the street as a cafe. So uh, you're Wayne, you there wanted to check the to Wayne. You wanted to check the building plans for the right. building. Correct. That, I wanted to remind you of that. Okay. Uh, what time are we going to meet up with this? This gentleman? Whenever whenever he shows he, up. He's on the way. He's on the way? Okay. Yeah. No, we, can, we can do that afterwards, too. Yeah. All right. So as you guys are sitting there after about, uh, oh, a half an hour or so, um, you see Paul walking in your direction. Uh, you think that he probably just got off of a, a bus or something. I don't know they had buses. I'm sure they had buses back then. Sort of some public transportation in, in, in Paris. Um, and you see him walking. Uh, he's walking towards you uh, with sort of a nonchalant, you know. Gaunt. Not really smiling. Not really just, uh, uh, bonjour, messieurs. Monsieur, monsieur. I will uh, stand up to greet him, shake his hand, and ask him to sit down with us. All right. Um, he says, so how are you doing this morning, messieurs? Oh, wonderful. Quite well. How are you? How, how do you feel with your day off? Seem like a hard worker. Uh, I never have anything to do on my days off, so this is kind of a change of pace. Oh, good, good. I, I, I motion for the waiter and order, you know, some some basic paste, pastries, some sort of appetizers, and um, okay. we'll start off with, like, tea or something like that, but we're going to graduate to... Have your stuff later on. All right. Uh, he, prefers, he prefers coffee, so he's going to drink some coffee. And... Croissants? You know, in America, we call them croissants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, monsieur. You're not that What? Uh, so, what would you like to do today, or what? Uh, what do you have in mind? Well, tell, tell me more. I mean. We, we've come into this great city of yours, and we come as tourists. You know, we, we checked out the Louvre. We went down to the uh, the catacombs. We climbed the Eiffel Tower. Right. You, the tower. you said you were kind of interested in. Uh, yeah. What, what else? What, what, yeah. What, what else do you uh, do the locals do here? Like non-tourist type stuff. Non-tourist. What do you see, Monsieur? One thing is uh, that uh, uh, people in Paris live in uh, fairly small apartments, so kind of the outdoors becomes our living room. Mm. Uh, 
So you'll see us, uh, you know, at the cafes like we are here or sitting on the steps or just hanging out with one another, enjoying the day. There are many, many parks here in, uh, in Paris. Well, anywhere that uh, a stranger or a first-time visitor wouldn't know about, like maybe some local places. Um, there are some fountains and some nice places to eat. There's lots of nice places to eat. It's Paris. Tom, uh, I want to try a psychoanalysis role. In fact, I'm going to try several after I start a line of questions. I want to see how I can um, not watch him squirm, but to see how he reacts to uh, certain questions and how he's how I predict he's going to react. So um, should I just start rolling now? Just what are you going to ask? Um, just ask. Well, basically, I'm just going to ask him straight out about his his job and um, what was the last director like. Because well, I just read in his paper that he died, and um, it was all of a sudden. Did he die at home? Was it inf was it influenza? Was it the flu? No, Monsieur. Uh, you you've asked me like four questions. They're all in one sentence. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I I enjoy my job, sir. But uh, uh, as I say, I'm I'm hoping to find a better one. Um, uh, de Plassé was a nice man. Uh, uh, he always called me by name, which was uh, kind of uh, nice. Um, uh, he had an accident, and uh, the current director has kind of covered it up to some extent. He didn't want us. He, he gave us specifics not to speak to anyone about it. Um, but uh, he was electrocuted this year. Mm. Oh, um, I'm sorry to hear that. He uh, is this is this one of those? He was a strong proponent of using his uh, um, electroshock machine on various patients who who he thought he was helping. But and I'm sure he was helping in some extent. But the accident was he ended up electrocuting himself. This year. I see. I see. Is this one of the reasons why? Oh. I ask him, is this one of the reasons why you're, you're looking for a new place of employment? Uh, the, the no, no, no. Is, is not to your liking. Charenton Char Char is a dangerous place. Uh, um, we are injured all the time. Mm. Now, this, is the, this is the least of my injuries on my face. Well, what type of work would you try to get into? Oh, I do the same thing. I just do it in a less dangerous place. Mm. I mean, there's mental health and there's mental health. <laughs> you know, if I go to a nice place where they have rich people who are just, uh, you know, having a little trouble uh, dealing with their husbands or wives, then uh, nah, that's easy. Uh, when they're taking derelicts off the street and bringing them in and uh, having us, you know, wrestle them to the ground when they give them a, a medication, huh, I see. it's not so it's not so easy. Without yeah. saying without saying any names, who would you say is your most dangerous patient that you've ever come across? Hmm. Ones that are unpredictable. There was a Miss Elisa Stranden who uh, she very nearly broke my arm. Wow. Um, she also That's kicked me in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, say, I yeah. think she was the one I liked the least. Pretty little thing. You wouldn't expect this little 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 woman that but my God, she could kick. Oh, she didn't like have any um, uh, out of the ordinary strength, you know, that would come from. Uh, I believe the ordinary. doctor told me it's uh, adrenaline. Yes, it's, uh, adrenaline. Adrenaline. Yeah. Or they do amazing feats or anything uh, like that. I wouldn't say that it was any more amazing than kicking me in the nuts, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, she was uh, quick and wiry and hard to, hard to keep a hold of, and uh, had a foul mouth, very foul Did mouth. She... But you get kind of used to that. We all—they all have foul mouths. Yeah, I would You're... have a foul mouth too if I had to get strapped to a bed and, uh, you know, uh, sedated all the time. 
Well, with sedation, you know, you've got definitely a position of trust, uh, a position of power. Have you ever seen any types of abuse? Well, perhaps. I suspect. Without, I suspect. without saying. I, I, I've, I've, I've strongly suspected uh, a few employees, yeah, of uh, abusing their power. Mm. I'll say this. Um, I have finished my tea maybe 10 minutes ago, so I, I uh, motioned to the, the waiter, and I asked to bring him to bring out some wine. I say, uh, would you guys mind if I began to partake of this nice wine? <laughs> Hey, and please I said you get us. a carafe and I'll join you. Yeah, well, please help yourself. Thank you, Monsieur. Well, I mean, we are guests in your country. Merci, merci beaucoup. We are guests uh, to our, our dinner table. Um, okay, so you guys have you guys are drinking a little. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask him about the the people directly. Not saying any names until he hopefully gives me the name that I'm that I'm looking for, uh, such as Martin, <laughs> about people that he suspects and what their personalities are like. Okay, um, just one thing: you keep telling me what you're going to ask me, and then you have <laughs> to keep... ask me. Just ask me where we're characters. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, these people that you suspect are there? Are there lots of them? Does this make it a horrible place, would you say? Well, I, you know, without knowing anything for sure, I don't want to name names, but uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there is one of them who recently uh, was injured by a patient, um, uh, Gima. Um, the thing is, is that sometimes we were, we were uh, posted to the same wing, and uh, we had the night shift, and he would disappear. Uh, I'd go looking for him, and I couldn't always find him. And and uh, under most circumstances, I uh, I ended up getting called away to a patient or something, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't continue looking. But um, I found him one evening not too long ago uh, in the basement. Uh, I don't know why he would go down there or anything, but he was severely injured. And uh, I think that he was. I think that he was taking people down there. Mm. I think he was taking the patients down there, and correct. I, 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 sh I shudder to think what he was doing. Mm. Mm. What type of injury did he receive? What's that? You said he was injured. What what sort of injury was it? Uh, he he his arm was was slashed open. Um, I don't know on what. Uh, uh, as soon as I saw, uh, I, I immediately uh, called the guards and uh, we took him up and uh, we took both of them up and uh, put him in in one room and we, we alerted the doctor, the, the director. Is he, is, and, he okay? uh, is, he, is he well now? Is, you know, what, was, what happened to him? I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of static from your... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what ended up happening to him? I believe he's been uh, put into one of the the wards. Um, uh, I don't. I think that he may have, you know, lost his mind. He's uh, he was always a little uh, touched by God. Un unstable. No, I wouldn't say God touched him. I'd say that he was. Uh, you know, I think that he was an orphan. I think that he was passed around. I think that he was probably physically abused, and. Um, he was he was not a strong personality, but he did take advantage of people that were weaker than him. So, and I I I was trying to find a moment when I could catch him at something so that I could talk to the director. But the director is a charitable man. He, uh, as from what I understand, he took Gimar off the street and uh, gave him a job and. He sounds like a very, very honorable man. What about now, the current you, director? You, yeah, you spoke of uh, another person that went to another room. Uh, yeah, one of the patients. I assumed that, that he was abusing. 
Was he, was this particular patient familiar to you? Not I mean, but there are, are a lot of patients. But there's a lot of patients there. I see. And we aren't we aren't always assigned. In fact, it's it's not not that often that we're assigned to the same the same area. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, we were, and I I wanted to know what he was up to. Mm -hmm. Are are patients allowed to come and go from the rooms as they please, or does it depend? That depends on the patient. There are there are a lot of there, there, there are a couple of the wings that are devoted to people who have money and they come there to um, get better. Get better, yes. And they, they have a lot more freedom. And then, of course, there is the derelict wing where there's not much order at all. It's uh, everybody is thrown together and they sleep where they, they lie down. And uh, but they have no money. There's no money to support them. And what's to prevent say? One person from one wing entering the other wing. Is it just like a locked door, or we've got guards and locked doors? Yes, guards and locked doors. Yes. This last victim of his was he a derelict? I think that's what he was. Yeah, he looked like he was a had been a, a street person. Um, he was emaciated and uh, uh, he looked pretty horrible. I didn't I didn't get that good a look at him. Uh, we were I was more concerned with. Getting the director. Well, did it ever get as as serious with uh, Guimard that, like, did a patient ever, you know, report him for abuse or worse? Like, did a patient ever go missing under his watch or? Not that I'd ever heard of before, but then again, nobody believes anything patients say. Oh, yeah. um, we get we get accused of. Uh, like I say, the things that come out of the mouths of these people, they'll, they'll say anything to retaliate because we made them take a bath or, right, right. you know. Um, and and he's, he's enjoying himself and telling you little stories about getting kicked in the nuts and things like that. <laughs> The cool. last director, is it like the uh, states here where we have our own special interests? We have our own wings. Oh, sure, monsieur. Uh, did they, um, is that where he got um, killed with his own equipment? In his own wing? Uh, I believe so, monsieur. I, I believe that's where he was. he was working on a patient. I don't know. I, I, I don't know the details of that. But, I know. Uh, it seems kind of strange that um, it sounds like it's, it's, uh, maybe you don't know that what, he was by what himself. I, what I, uh, you know what I heard is that there was nobody in the room with him when he was uh That's electrocuted. the strange part. So, yes. Well, it, it may be that he was preparing the machine or uh -huh. he, liked, he liked to fiddle around with it. He was, he was very proud of it. Hmm. Um, is it a Zeigler? Is it a Zeigler model by any chance? Let me think. Let me think. I think I know the model. The, the... Um, it was a... Oh boy, you're going to have me pronounce this, and I'm French. Um, <laughs> a, a grand... Uh, Guignol, G U I G N O L, Grand Guignol ele style electroshock device. Has he had um, has he had success with that device with other patients? Oh yeah, I suppose. Hmm. I mean, the, the, man, the man wasn't torturing them; he was uh, helping them. He was, he, was following the, he was following the correct procedures, but yeah. He's administering medicine. I, I'm quite familiar with it. Not that I use it, but I, I know the, the science behind it. So, well, um, while we're talking about this, have you? What was the most interesting or the most? Yeah, what was the most interesting that, thing that ever happened at the the uh, asylum? Something that. You might talk to your co-workers about sometimes in the uh, lunchroom. Hmm. I don't know. There's so many weird things that happen. 
so oh. many of these. I, it's just that the patients are weird. They'll say strange things to you. They'll just come up to you and say things, and you know that they're a princess, that they're uh, Napoleon, that they are, you know, and you just sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, okay, no, yes. Paul. Your Majesty, please uh, now go to the toilet. You know. <laughs> go to the loo. Uh, now, Paul, your um, your coworker that has now become a patient, does that happen a lot? What did the uh, 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 the orderly became uh, a patient? Well, it's the first time I ever heard of it. Yeah, same here. Sounds like an interesting case. But then again, how often do uh, how often do they take um, uh, people uh, of his uh, past and make them into orderlies in hospitals? I suppose if they're strong, then that's and he, he was a strong man. That uh, that's that's a good enough reason. We don't have to have a high education. I probably had twice the education that he had. Not to mention, I've always heard it said that people who are attracted to the psychological, they, they tend to be on the edge themselves. So. At ease, at ease. I'm not pointing <laughs> fingers or anything. I'm just, uh, it's what I've heard. I have, I have, I have heard that uh, some psychologists can get very depressed if they, if they, how do you say, um, if they identify with the patient too much, yes. mm -hmm. that they can become very depressed. And then mm -hmm. they have to see a psychologist. And then that psychologist has to see a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And then everybody gets a whole bunch of money. <laughs> so what's the new director working on? Anything? Is just he working on a to, book? He's trying to get a handle on everything. He's a good man, too. He's just mm -hmm. he's a little bit more. He's you know trying to show everybody that he knows what he's doing. Do you know if he came from another hospital, or was he promoted from within? Or? No, he was. He was. Uh, he was probably one of the head doctors. I, I think he was one of the head doctors at the, the Charenton. So mm -hmm. they just they just moved him up. Mm -hmm. Now, before the before the, the previous director passed, how did everybody treat, or how, did it, did anybody dislike the current director? Before he became the director. Did anybody just like Dr. LaRue? Yeah. No. Not that I know. So, so your co-workers thought he was a pretty good guy? I, I think so. I think uh, probably one of his favorite people was uh, Madame Renault. Uh, but she's a rather severe woman anyway. And uh, she likes the... I think she was in the, the military. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she kind of enjoys that sort of thing. Well, I, doubt that, I doubt, though, that she's ever had sex. Well, I could, she's, I could, like, she's like when you can. She's like she's like Attila the Nun. <laughs> well, I don't like that. I, I guess, unfortunately for you, Giles, um, sounds like she may not be interested in you. Gosh darn! <laughs> Golly, you willikers. How big is your basement down in that facility? Is it by ward, or is it just one big, huge, gigantic basement? Um, I really don't know. I, I have no idea the full extent of it. Nobody uses it anymore. It's, it's dusty. It's dirty. Um, uh, that's why I, I thought that it was... I, the only reason I knew that uh, somebody had gone down there, and I suspected it was Gimar, was because the door was unlocked. But... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, my my guess is it's just as big as the hospital itself. It goes on and on and on. And Does that go the same for the cellar? I thought that we were talking about the cellar this year. Oh, yeah. Duh. Okay. I keep getting cellar and uh, attic mixed up. I keep thinking, yes, okay, so it's um, a particular area, but you haven't really visited that that area. There's no reason to go down there. Well, I think there is, and the rationale behind it is to see if there's what any he's left. patients down there. That he, he may have had multiple patients, this, uh, this guy. Oh, well, I'm sure they would have looked around to see if there was anybody else down there. No, so, uh, you know, it, it, 
I don't know. I, I, I feel bad for this this patient that, that's emaciated and malnourished just for the pleasure of somebody else. I, you know, that's sickening. And, but, you know, we, we've been talking all this... Uh, this is dark stuff. Let's have some more wine. We, this is your day off. We're supposed to uh, enjoy. There you ourselves. go. There you go. Uh, let's move on. Nice. Let's let's move a little bit beyond the wine, don't you think? Hmm? Have you ever had? Uh, we have some nice Parisian brandy. Wow, man, go for the throat. And it goes it goes well with the coffee and so. Does it? A bit of coffee with uh, a bit of brandy in there. Uh, I. Let me give that a try. I call over the waiter. And, Do you mind if I smoke? Mm -hmm. Hey, have at it. I'm Go going ahead. to light up as well. You see, Monsieur, this is what we do. We sit around for hours and hours drinking and smoking and talking. Okay. That, that is as Parisian as you can get. I'm enjoying this. I am definitely enjoying this. I'm, glad that we, I'm actually glad that we, we got a chance to meet and you know, I'm actually making a good friend here. And I did ask you, Monsieur. Don't don't say anything about our, our conversation. Of course, of course. This is all between us, Monsieur. What's the best way to get on the new director's side? I would like access to, like, uh, perhaps a tour of the facility. I've I've w worked very very little, Monsieur, with uh, Doctor Delarue, uh, so I don't know what he likes and what he doesn't like. But I guess okay. we're going to find out now that he's the director. Yes, and. Unfortunately, absolutely. Have you, Monsieur, have you ever been out of the country? No, Monsieur. And, and I'm in, right now kind of making small talk. In between our barrage of questions, I'm <laughs> making small talk, too. I said, if you ever decide to take a holiday, come to England. Come to London. I'll, I'll show you around, too. England, I've heard it's so foggy and cold. Well, if that's not to your liking, next time we're in the States. Uh, and I, I, I don't mean to insult you, Monsieur, but oh my God, your food sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, Monsieur Mutton, oh my God. Oh. He doesn't mutton. like lamb. I, 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 am, I am not a fan of mutton. Either. Uh, kidney, kidney pie, oh my God, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> I will say, Monsieur, that the uh, the food here is far better, far grander than it is in England and the Americas. That's so, when yes. in decades Germany is going to, to invade us because they want that good food. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry, I just had a vision of the future. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, Monsieur, that would never happen. I guess the, the Germans can be a bit rough around the edges, but no, I don't think, I don't think something like that would happen. Do you guys have any other um, pointed? No, we, you know, we'll, just, we'll 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 spend half of the you know half of the day with them. In the afternoon, we're gonna probably go to the library, but um, we're just gonna get show this guy a good time. You know, feed him, you know, water him, and um, okay. and then eventually, like I guess, send him off and have tell him, you know, it's great having a chat with you. Um, you should be in Paris for a while, but if you, on your day off, want to come out and meet up with us, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this, and I wouldn't mind uh, meeting up with you again. You asked me something, Monsieur, about something weird, and this doesn't have anything at all to do with the asylum, okay. but have you ever heard of Honoré Fragonard? I, I can't understand that word, let alone say it. But that's not important right now. What were you about to say? Uh, <laughs> there is a, uh, a little museum that's not too far from here, uh, Maisons en France. Um, uh, it's called um, La Musée de le Camp National Vétérinerie d'Alphonse. And uh, easy for you to say. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a veterans museum. Well, that's what it was originally, but uh, now it's an art museum, and uh, 
If you want to see something truly weird. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, you want to see something to scary? Really scary? Like Twilight Zone? Okay. <laughs> Stay in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur, if you want to see something really weird, <laughs> that is the place to go. Hmm. Well, I could not even describe the weirdness that you will see there. What town is this uh, near? It's, it's not too far from here, about, uh, about a mile from here. Would you like oh. to take us there? Uh, I think I will take you there, but I don't think I will go in because I don't want to see it again. <laughs> okay. Wow. You, you mean uh, like speaking art-wise, you mean? Like paintings and photographs? Mm. Let us call them sculptures. Oh, okay. Ooh. That sounds interesting. Well, we'll let him uh, lead us on as yeah. we as we weave our way to the museum. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you walk. It takes you not, not long, what, probably less than 10 minutes. Um, and there's a, a pretty ornate little building. Looks like it's in the Art Nouveau style, and uh, uh, he says, uh, enjoy, messieurs, uh, and if you need anything, give me a call. You know where I live. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Merci, merci. Okay. Now, it costs five francs to get in, and the name Honoré Fragonard is quite prevalent here and there. And uh, when you step inside, you realize what our friend was talking about, Paul. Um, uh, the Musée de la Scan uh, National. Uh, um, Henri Fregenard's Escorche sculptures. Mm. Uh, Escorche means uh, for dramatic. Da, 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 da. Escorche means flayed. Wow. Interesting. Ah, uh, by the gods. I mean, by God. Sorry. And what they are is, uh, there's somebody who's, who does speak a little English there, and they explain to you that uh, he created a process whereby he could take cadavers and leatherize the skin and the veins and pose them, and he made these things with, their skin flayed, and there's a horse with its skin flayed with a lady riding it, and it's really gruesome. <laughs> well, let's um, let's look around and see if anything pings to us, you know, or anything yeah. sings to us, or anything like that. Well, you you realize pretty quickly that they're so freaking creepy that. You are going to probably have nightmares. You can see why what's, Paul didn't want to come in here again. So do we have to make sanity rolls? No, not really. Okay. Um, it is kind of amazing, but really kind of disturbing. And, um, of course, you do think about uh, the guy the your previous... Uh, uh, your previous uh, uh, relationship with a skinned yeah. uh, person. Yeah. Well, I would try to actively look for anything that's similar to the writing that was on the previous guy's skin. See if any, uh, there's any sort of thing. Nothing. That Everything in here is in that. French. Everything okay. here is in French, yeah. Um, and it's not a huge collection. It really only takes you half an hour to look at the pieces that he did. And I only had three of them. There's actually, if you ever go to the website, it's... Oh, no, I've seen it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, it's actually like a museum we have here in Philadelphia, the, the uh, Mutter Museum. Yeah. And it has all, yeah, it has all that pretty cool 
stuff like that. It's uh, just just a little bit of nastiness. <laughs> All right. So what are you gonna do now? Um, we got I'm just, I'm just curious. Is, is that guy still alive at this time? Um, on on uh, No, he was. Okay. That was in the, the 1700s. Okay. Wow. He learned how to do something like that in the 1700s. That's interesting. And he didn't consider himself an artist. He considered himself an anatomist. That he was studying the the human body. I'm surprised they let him get away with that back then. Interesting. Let's head to the library. Yeah, let's check out for catacombs and secret entrances, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so from here, let's say it's about noon, you're going to head to the, the library. Um, did you call for... Are you just going to look in the general library, right? Or do you, need Remy? do you need Remy? I think we can start in the general library. Um, is that, that should be, I guess, basic or common knowledge for uh, Parisians. Um, like old maps of the city, um, some of the you know, architecture of some of the older buildings. Uh, you find you find of course maps of the city, and you find maps that show the catacombs at least partial, um, as far as they've been mapped. Um, nothing that goes out very far. Um, you don't find anything on Charenton Asylum. I see. You do find references, of course, to Charenton Asylum. But no, um, no, no uh, floor plans or maps. Right, no. It was built in 1631. Um, did, the building, did the building look the same? Like if I look at some drawings or renditions of, of the building when it first was built, did well, it look similar? Um, or did it look like... I don't, look I don't like, believe there are any. Okay. No, it's not, they didn't have photographs, and they nobody's going to say, oh, let's go out and paint the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean no. they might. They might. That might have happened, but I... I, I, I would think, like, um, a historian, uh, like an artist historian would probably paint something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm people just, had a strong aversion to the... Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. You know, yeah. ...mental asylums. Nobody wanted to go up there. Um... So you don't really find anything on the asylum or, or any kind of plans or anything like that. Maybe we need to go to the other one and bring Remy, Remy along. I think I want to I want to send a telegram to the director and ask him if if he'll have dinner with me sometime at a cafe to talk shop. I wanted to ask him and compare techniques. And basically, I'm going to butter him up. So um, I'll use, I want to first use a fast talk roll, and then I want to follow up. You're, you're doing it again. You're telling me what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, you're going to send a message to the director. Yes, so I want to send a message to the director. All right. I want to invite him to dinner. All right. Um, I you you uh, you send your you send your message. Yes. And uh, uh, it's now getting towards evening. Um, uh, is there anything else you guys want to do? Nothing no, I can think of. Nothing I can think of. Are you guys going to make any plans for tomorrow? You're probably going to go to um, Poise. Um, Poise, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you don't get any response from the, but then again, there hasn't been enough time. It, Correct. Know, That's fine. You know, this this is that the 1920s when messages go slowly. Yeah. Um, all right. You guys, um, you guys sleep okay, but 
you also kind of have some weird, freaky dreams about those <laughs> statues. Mm. Um, they were kind of disturbing. Kind of amusing, too. You kind of found that you were giggling at them, but at the same time, now you find that the fact that you were giggling at them is even more disturbing than... <laughs> I wonder if maybe I could have taken a picture of them. Um, For five francs, you can. <laughs> you, you, you didn't say anything to me, so I'll say you, you probably forgot your, your camera. Okay. Oh, you also forgot to pick up your pictures. I was just yeah, I was just waiting for the right time. Okay. Well, you can pick them up tomorrow morning. Um. Well. We could go another five minutes, or we could just because the next thing is going to be you going to Poise, so there's no yeah. point. I think and, it's and, and there's time. only three characters. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is there enough well, time we, to contact Remy and check out the library for the catacomb stuff? I or thought you guys room? just did that. No, we we went to the what are you talking about. No, we went to the 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 basic library, not the. Uh, the restricted oh. one. The bibliotech. Uh, the bibliotech. The word that you say so well. <laughs> well, as far as the catacombs go, you're not going to get a better uh, map that's mm -hmm. older um, because more of them have been mapped since then. So there doesn't say. Uh, what, what exactly are you looking for on the map? Or maybe I missaid that. Um, what was it? What was the map you were looking for, Wayne? It was just to get a map of the asylum. Well, yeah, the map of the asylum as well. But we were also going to look for uh, an extensive map of the catacombs, but it seems like we can't because they haven't really fully mapped it out. Okay. Okay. Here's another yeah. idea, though. Um, if we do go down into the catacombs again and try to get into the the area of the um, the asylum. What we could do is we could try to find a compass that we can buy or purchase and figure out where the asylum lies, which direction it lies from the catacombs. And when we get down underneath, we'll just follow that particular direction. I think they already stated, Paul stated that the catacombs were not anywhere near, so let's, let's well, hope for the best. Well, he, does, he doesn't know, and a lot of them haven't really been fully mapped or explored. And those who have explored it got lost down there. Yes. Yeah. The other thing too, if we do bring a compass, uh, that might help us with not getting lost. Right. So. So. So, I say since we only have three minutes. Well, we'll come back to the library. But we're gonna let's go to Pulsey uh, tomorrow. And Sounds by tomorrow, good. By yep. Tomorrow, I mean next week. And at the, at the library, you were going to look for uh, uh, plans for the Sharrington Asylum. Yeah. All right. Let's see if they had any original plans. You know, I would imagine any building that gets built, there's a uh, there's you know, building plans, and then they get recorded into sort of the system, and there's some sort of place that holds these records. Okay. Um, well, we'll yeah, see. Sure. we'll see what the answer to that is next week, and uh, I guess we'll call it there. Um, thanks, guys, for participating. Thanks to all our viewers for watching. We hope you enjoyed our game session. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. Uh, please tune in next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next episode of Horror on the Orient Express. Until next time, always remember, if there is no light left to guide your path, the only choice is to venture into the darkness. Good night. Good night, good, guys. And good gaming.